Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our lecture videos about assessment. In this video, we will talk about the roles of assessment in instructional planning. These are the classifications of the roles of assessment. Assessment of learning, assessment for learning, and assessment as learning. Assessment of learning occurs after instruction and assessment for learning and assessment as learning can be done before instruction, during instruction, and even after instruction. Let us begin by discussing assessment of learning, which occurs after instruction, and it will answer the question, what the students have learned. Since this is conducted after instruction, it is a right time to ask this one, what the students have learned after the discussion, after the drills, after the seat works, after the board works, after the series of activities that we have conducted as teachers. It is now time to gather evidences if students have learned something or if students have achieved the lesson objectives. And assessment of learning, it is where assessment informs students teachers and parents, as well as the broader educational community of achievement at a certain point in time in order to celebrate success, plan interventions, and support continued progress. When we think of assessment of learning, we will associate this to the summative role of assessment from the root word SAM. That is a mathematical word, some meaning we are going to get the total or we are going to add certain topics. So probably these are two to three topics or two to three skills, and then you are going to give a one-time activity or a one-time test or a one-time exam. So this is the summative role of assessment, which will be given after the instruction is completed. Now let us discuss into details what is this assessment of learning or summative role of assessment. Summative assessment is intended to measure learning outcomes and report those outcomes to students, parents, and administrators. In an educational setting, it generally occurs at the conclusion of a class, course, semester, or academic year. In the context of course, summative assessments are typically used to assign students a course grade. So summative assessment usually uh, takes a lot of allocation in the grades. So for example, in our school, Bukidnon State University, 40% is allocated to the major examinations. This is the midterm exam and the final exam. So those are examples of summative assessment. And the results of this midterm and final exams will be reported to students, meaning we are going to return the scores to students and we are going to share the results to parents, especially in the basic education. After the first grading period, there is a convocation program where, where parents can see the grades of their kids and we are going to make a report to our administrators. All of the activities that we are going to consider under summative assessments are graded and it usually occurs at the conclusion or meaning at the end of a class. If you are handling a class, you gave your you presented your lesson, you presented your example number one, example number two, you make a guided practice and independent practice. And after all doing all those things, you are now ready to give your evaluation. And that is the summative exam or the summative activity of your lesson. At the end of a course, these are the midterms and the final exams. That is also the same with the semester, and that is also the same with the academic year. That is an achievement test. Performance-based assessment is similar to summative assessment as it focuses on achievement. A well-defined task is identified and students are asked to create, produce, or do something often in settings that involve real-world application of knowledge and skills. Proficiency is demonstrated by providing an extent response. Performance formats are further differentiated into products and performances. 
there are some subjects that doesn't require an exam at the end. Some of these subjects would require a performance-based activity, whether it will ask the students to create, produce, or do something. Example of these subjects are physical education subjects. And there are also topics, contents in other subjects that doesn't require a test at the end because the competency requires the students to create, produce, or do something. So we have to rely on the competencies or on the objectives that we are trying to achieve at the end of the lesson. So it is not necessarily that summative exam or summative activity is a written activity because it focuses on achievement, just like the written exam. So performance-based assessment would also focus on achievement. Summative assessment is used to certify what students know and can do and the level of their proficiency or mastery or competency at the end of the course, unit, chapter, grading period, or semester. So let me emphasize this once again. At the end of the course, unit, chapter, grading period, or semester. And we will certify, you know, we will certify what students know and can do and the level of their proficiency or mastery. Are they advanced? Are they proficient? Are they developing? Are they in beginning stage? So examples for this may include a unit test, a chapter test, a long test, quarter exams, midterm exams, and final exams. And its results reveal whether the instructional objectives have successfully achieved or not. If the students passed, meaning they have achieved the objectives. If not, then that is the time that you have to plan interventions, then you have to pause and you have to make reflections on how can you help the students more. Summative assessment, this determines the readiness of the students before moving to the next unit. Now, if you have noticed, at the end of every chapter, at the end of every unit, there must be a chapter exam or a unit exam to check if they have mastered the previous skills or if they have mastered the contents of that particular topic or unit which are probably necessary for the next unit. The results of summative tests are rated or graded which are usually expressed whether in letter, numer numerical grades, on the basis of a standard set of mastery. The results are communicated to the students, parents, and other stakeholders for decision-making. The next thing that we're going to discuss is the assessment for learning, which occurs before instruction, during instruction, and after instruction. And it will answer the question, how can we help the students more? It is where assessment helps teachers gain insight into what students understand in order to plan and guide instruction and provide helpful feedback to students. So you will gain these insights before the instruction. So for example, you are going to give a pretest. So after checking the pretest, you will gain an insight of what students know and doesn't know at the moment, or what are the topics that they are having confusions. And during instruction, you will understand them better. What are the things that they are having trouble with, or what part of the topic that they are having trouble with, so that you can re-emphasize those things. And even after the instruction, by giving the drills, by giving the seat works, you would gather evidences. You can gather evidences and you can feel that one if the students were able to follow the instructions and were able to answer the questions. And by looking at those answers of the students, you can provide helpful feedback to students. You can minimize the misconceptions. You can provide clarifications for all those things. Now let us discuss this assessment for learning into details. These are the assessment for learning. Now take note in assessment of learning, we only have summative role of assessment. But here in assessment for learning, we have the formative role, 
displacement role and we also have the diagnostic role. Let us begin by discussing formative assessment. Formative assessment is generally carried out throughout a course or project. In an educational setting, formative assessment is used by teachers to consider approaches to teaching and next steps for individual learners and the class and would not necessarily be used for grading purpose. So let me emphasize this one, not necessarily be used for grading purpose, but it's, it can still be used for grading purpose. However, you know, to contrast this to the summative assessment, the purpose of summative assessment is actually for grading, for certification of mastery. Here in formative assessment, the main focus of formative assessment is actually to help the students master the concepts. But still, we can give grades to it no? for them to see where they are as of the moment so that they would recognize what are the things that they need to do in order to get the passing rate or, or, or in order to get good scores. But still, we are going to give grades to formative assessment, but not all activities in formative assessments will be graded. Formative assessment also referred to as an educative assessment or assessment for learning is used to aid learning. And this is diagnostic by nature, which is used to, which is used to identify the student's learning successes and failures so that adjustment in instruction and assessment can be done. So there are two things that I would like to emphasize here, aid learning. We are going to gather learning successes and failures so that adjustment in instruction can be done. So by giving a formative assessment, so for example, you are going to ask oral questions, like question and answer activity. So you would be able to sense if students are knowledgeable or not knowledgeable in that particular topic. If you have noticed that they are not knowledgeable, so you can aid, you can provide help, you can provide reinforcement on that particular topic. And this is also diagnostic by nature because Again, the main purpose of this formative assessment is to help students master the concepts and skills. While you are in the middle of the discussion or during the discussion, you are going to exchange dialogue with the students and you would be able to recognize if they were able to follow properly the concepts, if they were able to understand the concepts, and if there are misconceptions that need to be clarified, you can address it immediately assessment for learning is identified as all those activities undertaken by teachers and our students which provide information to be used as feedback to modify teaching and learning activities in which they are engaged so all those activities so from presentation of examples, from guided practice to independent practice, from board works to drills to sit works. So all of those activities, the group works, those are considered as formative assessment. Or let us say you are asking review questions that can be considered as formative assessment because you, are, because you can get feedback and you can provide feedback out of it so that you can modify your teaching and the learning activities. Formative assessment, this is conducted to monitor the instructional process and progress. Then it determines whether learning takes place as planned. So we have here conducted to monitor. So this is what we're going to do. We are going to do monitoring and we are going to feel or we are going to control the quality of the class if they were able to follow the instructional process and the progress that is going on with the class. 
it is in this assessment where teachers continuously and regularly monitor the student's level of achievement and progress with respect to the learning objectives. I remember my teachers way back in our class that they would ask questions. Did you understand class? Do we need further examples? Are we ready for the exam? So those kinds of questions can be considered as a way of monitoring the student's level of achievement. And the main function is improvement, mastery, learning progress rather than grading. So again, let me emphasize this, that the main focus of formative assessment is to help students master the concepts, help the students improve themselves. So we, are, we can achieve this by giving them series of activities, series of assessments, activities, which are not necessarily be graded. So for example, you are going to ask your students to solve problems in mathematics. Those problems that you gave them are not necessarily to be graded. So for example, board works, drills, seat works, those activities will be checked, will be reviewed, but those things will not be necessarily be included in the final computations of grades. Formative assessment, it can be done through formal and informal methods such as short quizzes, daily quizzes, seat works, drills, assignments, group works, and recorded activities, board works, graded and ungraded quizzes, oral recitations, or questioning and etc. So again, I have here graded and ungraded quizzes. We can still give grades to formative assessment because it measures learning outcomes. But again, not all formative assessment activities will be graded. And it is facilitated in order to check the readiness of the students before moving to the next lesson. So if there are a series of lessons in that particular unit, no, after every lesson, you are going to give a check-up quiz or a, a check-up activity if they were able to master that concepts because those concepts are necessary or important as we move along on that particular lesson. Just to give you a contrast, here in formative assessment before moving to the next lesson, in summative assessment a while ago, it is before moving to the next unit. This is part of instruction designed to provide crucial feedback for teachers and students. It, it provides crucial feedback for teachers and students because you are gathering evidences, you are monitoring their learning if they were able to follow the lessons. Uses of formative assessment to students. Number one is reinforcement. Results of formative assessment should inform the students whether they have mastered a lesson or not. The results of this assessment are communicated clearly and properly to students for them to know their strengths and weaknesses and the progress of their learning. Providing feedback that helps students find means to improve learning. So after giving a series of activities as teachers, we can give comments to their outputs, performances, and products. We can give our feedback on how they can improve and what are the things that they can remove for a better performance or for a better output. After the series of activities, the students can request for more examples or for more activities so that they can capture well the lessons. Second uses of formative assessment to students is diagnosis. The errors made by the students in the formative evaluation diagnose the weaknesses of the students as basis for remedial instruction. So as teacher, we can, uh, we can sense what are the strengths and weaknesses of the students. But let us focus on the weaknesses because this assessment for learning focuses on how we can help the students more. By identifying their weaknesses, we can use that one as a basis for remedial instruction or as a basis of, of giving more examples and activities. Now, let us go to the uses of formative assessment to teachers. Number one is handling errors. 
that teachers should handle errors made by the majority of the students. This error should be reviewed by the class. So if there are significant errors that you have noticed in the class, we should not ignore it. We should address it properly, especially if that is a major concept or that is a major skill. Another uses of formative assessment to teachers is quality control or handling quality or controlling quality. If the teacher keeps record of the past performances of the students on the results of formative evaluations, he can make use of this record as basis for remedial instruction and improvement of instruction by using differentiated techniques, strategies, aids, and devices. So you, you can actually identify your, your you can actually identify your students who are advanced learners, average learners, and those students who are struggling academically. So you can group those students who are struggling academically, and you can provide differentiated instructions. You can extract them from the whole class so that you can provide more examples that is appropriate to their level. By doing this, you can control quality. And by, and by handling errors as well, you are also controlling quality. The third uses of formative assessment to teachers is forecasting. The results of summative tests can be predicted on the basis of formative assessment. Especially if you keep records of their previous performances, you can determine who are those students who will likely pass, who are those students who will likely fail. Now, let us focus on those students who will likely fail. We are going to call their attention so that we can provide reinforcement, so that we can provide motivation, and we can also inspire them. We can provide assistance and help so that they will pass the summative exam. Now, let us go to the placement assessment. We just finished the formative assessment or the formative role of assessment. Now, let us go to the placement role of assessment. This placement role of assessment is given before the instruction, before the beginning of class, because the results of this assessment places students in specific learning groups to facilitate teaching learning process. So this is like for sectioning purposes, or this is for cl classification. So we can have this during the college admission test or the pre-test of schools, where it will be used to assign you to specific sections, whether you will be in section A, section B, or section C, or it will also determine what will be your course if you are going to take a college admission test. And teachers use this assessment to know what their students currently know and use this as a starting point of instruction. And its purpose is to assess the needs of the learners to have basis in planning for a relevant instruction. So for example, I was able to handle section A, B, and C before. In section A, I present few examples, more activities. In section B, I provide a number of examples and more activities. In section C, I provide a lot of examples and a lot of activities for them to, uh, for me to determine if they have really attained the lesson objectives. Now let us go to the third role of assessment under assessment for learning, which is the diagnostic role of assessment. This is used to determine students recurring or persistent difficulties. And it searches for the underlying cause of problems that do not respond to formative evaluation and this is formative by nature and this is used before teaching a new lesson it can be in a form of pre-test or diagnostic test so the same with placement test we are going to give this diagnostic assessment before the instruction or before teaching a new lesson because we are going to determine what the students know and doesn't know with respect to the subject matter and we are going we are going to determine those recurring problem means they experience this kind of problem again and again and it is left unresolved so that is why we are going to search for the underlying cause of this learning problem so we are going to do an investigation we ask questions to the students so that we can provide assistance so we can provide this 
formative by nature. And after identifying the recurring problems and the underlying cause of difficulties, you can provide or you can formulate a plan for a detailed remedial instruction. So you can now start the formative assessment. And it can be applied to all modes of assessment. You can diagnose problems, difficulties, interest of the students as well, as well as their learning styles and preferences. Example of the modes of assessment that can be used, it can be based from a variety of information sources, such as from portfolio, work in progress, or ongoing activities. Now, while, while observing the students, you can have a diagnostic assessment. In the portfolio of the students, you can have a diagnostic assessment on that. From your teacher observations, from your interviews, formal and informal conversation of the students, you can gather data and evidences. You can gather information about them. During parent-teacher conference, you can share your problem to the parent and the parent can share his insights so that you would also understand deeply the students. And it helps to identify misconceptions, interest or learning styles and preferences. This diagnostic assessment does not only reveal the problems of the students, but it also shows the positive sides of the students. Now let us go to assessment as learning. It is where students develop an awareness of how they learn and use that awareness to adjust and advance their learning, taking an increased responsibility of their learning. This is activated by conducting self-assessment because this is also known as self-assessment. And you can do self-assessment before the instruction, during the instruction, and after the instruction. Assessment as learning is the process of introspection. It came from the Latin word introspicere, meaning to look within. The definition of introspection is self-examination. Analyzing yourself, looking at your own personality and actions, and considering your own motivation. An example of introspection is when you meditate to try to understand your feeling. Through this process, students are able to learn about themselves as learners and become aware of how they learn. They become, they be, become metacognitive or knowledge of one's own thought processes. Assessment as learning is the use of ongoing self-assessment by students in order to monitor their own learning which is characterized by students reflecting on their own learning and making adjustments so that they achieve a deeper understanding. It came from Western and Northern Canadian Protocol for Collaboration in Education in the year 2006. Thank you so much. That would be all about the roles of assessment. If you have any questions, comment below. Let me give due credit to slidesmania.com for allowing me to use their PowerPoint template. And that would be all for today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.